My involvement with BWS involves both a clinical care component and a research component. And basically, together with Dr. Rosanna Wexberg, I see all of the families who are referred to the hospital for sick children because a diagnosis of Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome has been raised or made in their child, or sometimes even in an adult themselves, and they have questions about the diagnosis. I also am involved in clinical research uh, together with Dr. Wexberg in, in trying to generate knowledge and move it forward and share it with all of the families with whom we meet. When I first learned about BWS, it was probably back in graduate school, back in the late 70s but I didn't really become very familiar with the condition until I started working together with Dr. Wexberg in 1990. She already had an active research interest in the condition and together we started to see um, all of the families referred to sick kids who had a child with Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. And at that point in time, I really learned so very much from the families beyond what was uh, published in the literature and I think really developed more uh, of a foundation of knowledge about the condition. Uh, we do know that children with BWS have an increased risk for developing a tumor in early childhood and active intervention with screening with ultrasounds and AFP measurement really has been demonstrated to impact the outcome. So I think it's a very important aspect of providing care for kids with BWS. So the guidelines for screening for cancer may vary somewhat depending on where the children live, at which medical center they're followed, and what the findings are that they've already uncovered on some of the tests that have already been undertaken. Generally, we suggest screening with abdominal ultrasounds every three months to about eight years of age, and having alpha fetal protein measurement, which is the blood testing, to um, screen for a protein that's made by the liver every three months till about the age of four years. After the age of eight years, we usually suggest ultrasounds about once a year or every 18 months because some children do develop what appear to be crystals in their kidneys that could be the beginnings of kidney stones, but that's not for cancer screening beyond the age of about eight years. And certainly if anything has been found that isn't what would be considered normal on any of those tests, then the testing should be based on um, the guidance of the medical care provider who's involved with that child. So if the AFP is elevated, then it needs to be repeated more frequently and monitored and put um, into context of the child's health and well-being. The question of blame and guilt is a difficult one. I don't think I've ever met uh, um, parents who have had a child with any genetic condition who haven't spent considerable amount of time thinking back about the pregnancy or pre-pregnancy, searching for things that they might have done or might not have done that might have influenced the outcome of the pregnancy. But we really don't have control of the genes that we pass down to our children or the genetic changes that happen by chance alone. Um, so one of the most important things that we talk to parents about is trying not to feel blame or guilt. If I tell a parent not to feel guilty, will that automatically erase the guilt? I don't think so, but I think it's important to realize that this isn't something that one can blame oneself for. These genetic changes, or what we call epigenetic changes, do happen by chance alone, and they're really without outside of our control. I think uh, with regards to other aspects of BWS, um, sometimes we focus on a genetic change or an alteration um, outside of the context of the rest of the child's health and well-being. It's important to remember that we all have approximately 30,000 genes in every cell of our body. Sometimes we focus very intently on the pair of genes or the genetic alteration and we forget about the 29,999 other genes that are functioning perfectly normally. Um, so I think it's important to remember that we're talking about a single genetic alteration and all of the other aspects of the child are perfectly normally developed and functioning normally and not 
to see BWS as defining the child, but rather to remember that this is your child who has BWS. I think the other um, issue to remember is that parents these days have access to lots and lots of information. Some of the information is excellent, some of it may be outdated and not particularly accurate anymore. Um, whatever information you access, you should discuss with your healthcare provider and make sure that it's appropriate for your child. And remember that your child won't develop all of the issues that you see or read about, um, that every child is unique, and that you should really evaluate your child based on their um, findings, their personality, all of the aspects of their development. I suppose the only other um, point that I'd like to raise is it can be very scary for parents to receive a new diagnosis, a new genetic diagnosis in their child or in their newborn baby. And the first few days, the first few months um, can also be very scary because you're not sure what to anticipate or how your baby's going to grow and develop. And I can't um, just reassure you and tell you that everything's going to work out. But I think the best piece of advice I could suggest is just to take it one day at a time, ask the questions that you need to ask, rely on the healthcare providers and the support organization to give you the information that you feel would be helpful.